Well, thanks everyone for uh, joining today's webinar. It's it, personally, it's super exciting to be here today to moderate uh, today's webinar. All of the partners that we're going to be chatting with today, and I have five different partners today that are uh, here. I want to thank uh, Just Uno Number One for putting this uh, all together and getting all of these amazing partners. These partners that we're going to learn from today, they are making significant impact in e-commerce. And so if you're an e-commerce uh, founder, if you're in marketing, if you're looking to uh, you know, grow and scale your business and you're trying to find the best strategies and tactics and what's going on in 2021 right now, then this is the recording for you today. And I'm just, thank you so much for coming. One thing I'll add is that um, this show is going to be recorded. And so you will get a copy of it um, after it's re been recorded. Um, and one thing that's really important to think about is, is that if you're ambitious and if you're a lifelong learner that I know today is going to be, it's going to blow your mind. I've had a chance to uh, peek through the uh, slide deck and it's really, really interesting. Some of the things that we're going to be learning today, as you can see on the screen here, these are the list of all the different partners that are going to be available today um, that are going to chat through. And maybe I'll just go briefly through each one of them, just so you kind of know who they are. Uh, first up is Chad Rubin, and he's the co-founder of a company called Skubana. And what they are is they're an inventory and order management platform, and they really do help direct to consumer brands, uh, really to improve efficiencies. And they work in all areas about how you can integrate your products, your fulfillment centers, and all your sales channels all get joined up together in the Skubana platform. Think about e-commerce store and wholesale and marketplaces and pop-ups and retail. They do it all, all from one platform. So they are the source of truth for understanding your warehouse. So next up we have uh, Steph and she is actually the customer success strategist from Justin who's helping put this on today. And what Just Uno is, if you don't already know, is there a lead capture tool, an exit intent, they do upsells and cross sells. They even get involved with Facebook Messenger opt-ins and leads and really help build that community through Facebook Messenger. They even have a really great addition that happened about a year or so ago. And I know they're really advancing on this now with this commerce AI they're calling it now, which is really helping using artificial intelligence and machine learning um, along with a strategist to really help reveal and share uh, a lot of the results of how a, a, a site visitor uh, can you know, find different products um, and how they can get better opt-ins. One thing too that I noticed uh, about Just Uno is that they are a Shopify Plus uh, technology partner, um, which is fantastic, which means they have the security and the privacy and the scale behind them. And they're also used by a lot of the largest um, uh, agency partners that are available in direct-to-consumer. Think Hawk Media, Mute6, Tenuity, uh, Worth Commerce. Many, many, many more agency partners use them. Next up, we also have uh, Greg Zakowitz, who is from OmniSend. And OmniSend also uh, is a Shopify Plus uh, technology partner. And they're an incredible marketing automation tool that does more than just email. They do SMS and push. They're one of the leading platforms that are uh, being used by Shopify Plus brands. Really, really exciting platform, owning the customer journey and owning the customer record. And they do it very, very, very well through flows. Can't wait to dig into what he has to talk about today. And also we have uh, David Duick from W Promote. Now W Promote, once again, also a uh, Shopify Plus agency partner, uh, phenomenal organization. They're part of a larger organization, but what's great about them is that they use data and a lot of insights to make uh, the best decisions around digital marketing strategies. They're very, very, very unique. They have their own uh, custom built uh, data platform and they really do a lot of data driven uh, analysis, things to you know, build customer lifetime value and just number one, impact the bottom line. So I'm looking forward to some of the stats he's going to reveal today. And finally, uh, Bob Vale from I'd say a very unique platform uh, in, in social media, uh, in understanding um, the, the social footprint of Instagram and thinking about influencers and how you can run influencer campaigns with your existing customers. So it's really interesting about how you can collaborate um, by just finding the first party data in Shopify as it relates to what's going on on your social footprint of your customers and you may want to work with them and they've got a really amazing uh, opt-in solution uh, that's all seamless. I'm looking forward to digging into that one too. 
today too. And now for me, um, I'm your, uh, I guess your moderator today. I just wanted to thank once again, Justin Inou for having me on. My background is a startup founder. I uh, got involved in an optical startup um, in Canada where I live. I took an exit from that. We built it to eight figures, um, got involved in the agency world, was there for four years, um, selling digital marketing and getting involved in marketing strategy. And that was a phenomenal little period of my life. Uh, got involved with Shopify, which I'm a current employee of Shopify in the merchant success team. And so I have a book of business or being a trusted advisor for about 60 brands. And I really help them to improve efficiencies um, and just profitably grow revenue and just think lifetime customer loyalty. So I'm their main point of contact in Shopify, but also part of my life of learning. And as you can see the logo up here, um, I also run a very popular um, podcast called e-commerce fast lane, and it's been running for just over four years now. Um, it's really starting to scale up and all because of these fantastic partners that we have available. A lot that are on today, I've interviewed all of them um, and they've shared the problems uh, and the solutions that they have um, in the marketplace. So uh, excited to be here um, and I feel I'm positioned well to kind of share um, and introduce a lot of these new partners. So let's get off to uh, a great start first. Uh, we'll get to the agenda so you can see exactly what we're going to be uh, talking about today. Um, and you know, we're going to talk about uh, Gatsby and their tool and how we can uh, scale and grow influencer marketing. Next, we're going to pivot over to OmniSend. We're going to learn more about email and SMS and the importance of that um, in, in your tech stack. We're going to then get involved with uh, Chad over at Scubana and understand about the operations and logistics behind as you're trying to grow and scale, how do you think about marketplaces and multiple warehouses? Um, it's very, very interesting what their tool does. Um, we'll next get into W Promote and they're going to help us understand more about return ad spend um, as it relates a little bit to iOS 14.5 uh, upgrade and some, uh, uh, some, I got a message this morning too about iOS 15 now. So there's lots of stuff going on about privacy policies um, and the cookie list world. And so how do we incre uh, increase their return on ad spend? And they have some really good strategy about the data they have and how they're able to build that out. And then finally, uh, our partner today who's uh, put this on uh, is Just Uno. We're going to talk about conversion optimization, and we're going to talk about pop-ups and exit intents, and we're going to talk about Facebook. It's very interesting how that platform works together seamlessly. So let's get on to the first partner and we'll get rocking here. So uh, my first partner is, um, is going to be um, Robert Vale, I go by Bob. And so he has, is going to introduce a, a solution called Gatsby, as I mentioned, and I'm going to pass the baton over to him and uh, we'll learn more about how they're helping with influencer marketing. Thanks, Steve. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks to Just Uno too for putting this together as well. Um, I kind of want to set the scene to start off just talking about like traditional influencer marketing uh, compared to the more customer focused approach to influencer marketing that uh, we built a solution around um, traditional influencer marketing starting there. You can kind of think back to the days of uh, the fire festival. If you've seen that, that documentary there, but um, traditionally when merchants you know, think about influencer marketing, it's cold outreach. Uh, more kind of celebrity focused, big ticket, big ticket handles with, with hundreds of thousands of followers. Um, you're typically working with like agents behind those accounts. You're, you're not actually speaking to the person directly. It's hard to track. You can do some experimentation with seeding, sending out free products, hoping that they'll post about it, but not always, not always guaranteed, right? And it's a lot of manual work. You're cold DMing, you're working out a spreadsheet, it's usually just sending out cold emails. And typically, uh, if you do get a post from that approach, it's usually pretty low in terms of the engagement rates. You know, we're talking like one to, to two percent, usually based off of their total following. And we've also gotten feedback that authenticity is our isn't always there. You know, you might have a, a contestant on The Bachelor that does a post about a product, but you kind of know in the in the back of your mind that it's it's for something. And then you can contrast to what we built a solution around, which is more of like a customer focused approach. So super low barrier to entry only requires people that have purchase your products and know, you know, you're, you're working with the folks that already know your brand. So the end consumer already knows they've already used your products. They typically have a smaller following. So we're talking about nano micro influencer focus. Um, but the authenticity is much higher. And in result, you see much higher engagement rates. You can kind of think of building an army of these actual customer micro influencers of yours, um, as opposed to paying one or two or three big ticket folks for content from them. And then our approach is also less expensive and it leverages the tools that you're already using. 
think as a, a, a store owner, um, having an additional platform that you have to log into it every day can sometimes be a little bit numbing. Um, so we want to make sure that you can use everything that you love to use currently um, to actually deploy this, this approach. And engagement rates from uh, a customer approach, we see anywhere from like 7 to 10%, um, so more than triple. Um, and um, I'll kind of show you tactically how, how to actually go about this and where you can start. Let's talk about how to leverage your, your customers. I included some screenshots in here. Um, this is Volcom, one of our customers. We basically look at any point where you're capturing customer data, like capturing email address is totally ubiquitous. Um, we're sort of pioneering the idea of capturing social handle as well. So wherever you're capturing email, it's an opportunity to also ask for their handle. And you can do this anywhere in the customer journey. So I kind of have like two contrasting use cases here. This is a company that loves to ask it up front. And here's Pair of Thieves. And uh, Fashion Nova does this as well, where they love asking for the handle at the order confirmation page. We find that roughly 20% of folks, when they give you their email, they'll also give you their social handle. And then over time, after you're doing this for a few months, you can usually get about 30% of your total database um, in handles. Another use case we recommend is just setting up a landing page. Uh, super quick and easy to do um, if you haven't done this already, but it's a standalone page on your site where folks can get more involved with you. And we've seen like different wording around this. You could call it a partner program or, hey, I'm starting an ambassador program or even something just more soft, you know, hey, do you want to be a content creator for us? Or do you want to just get, you know, work with us closer? Um, and what you can actually do is work this into messaging post purchase, or even historically, you know, folks that have purchased in the past six to 12 months, if you haven't been collecting their handle yet, it's never too late to go back and ask them because what you'll find a lot of the times is since you haven't been collecting the handle, it's really impossible to know of your customers that you have so far who loves you and who's influential, who might be a great in, you know, advocate for the brand, even if they have, you know, let's say five or 10 or 15,000 followers. And it's just kind of more everyday consumer level. Um, what to expect? So um, this is a question we get a lot when, you know, they have, you know, merchant hasn't been collecting handle. It's sort of kind of this abstract concept until you try it. Um, and we find that 25 to 40% of all the handles you collect we'll have over a thousand followers if that's where you want to start. Um, it's even higher for that for folks over 500 followers. Um, Cause again, you can still have those, those folks be great advocates for the brand just at a smaller level. Um, but you have more of them actually doing it. So 25 to 40% of all the profiles collected uh, will have at least over a thousand. And then how do we use these insights? So when we collect the handle, what we do is provide all of those influencer insights, uh, like how, just all about how influential they are, how many followers they have, how many posts they've done, how many people they are following, all of that. And we pass that into wherever you store customer info. And more common than not, than not that's you know the ESP, that's OmniSend, it's Klaviyo gorgeous maybe your support system we want to make sure those insights are available there and what folks will do is they'll create a completely automated flow where they'll reach out to people that have over at least a thousand followers and incentivize them to post about the brand volcom does not have someone on their marketing team that's going to be able to reach out to the everyday consumer with just a few thousand followers it's just not scalable and it's too much it's too much manual work so they'll automate an email out and it gets, gets a pretty, pretty high open rate. So here's famous footwear. I just wanted to include like an example of theirs. You know, you go to their site there, they ask you for the handle within the customer experience, the customer journey rather. And if you're over a thousand followers for them, you might get an email like this, where they're incentivizing that person to just post about the brand, do a story. Even it doesn't have to be a post. You could do something more light if you wanted and in exchange, they're giving $20 off their next purchase. And what's really important here is just strategy wise, uh, folks are usually surprised about how excited uh, their customers are to even just get a discount off their next purchase for a post, as opposed to the traditional way where you're paying some, someone to just, to just do the post. And I'm just gonna cut them a check. And this outreach email gets twice the open rate as usual for them. Um, and then 
for them, 12.1% of them who opened the email actually went and posted. Um, and their engagement rate was around nine, 9% 9 there. Um, another email, uh, email example here too, I wanted to throw this in there because it's not like a typical, you wouldn't think it's super popular on Instagram, but this is tools today and they do like tools, power drills, all of that type of stuff. Same thing, they're incentivizing them to post about the brands. And then we close the loop on that too, so that you're incentivizing them, but you're not gonna be able to also manually give out those rewards. So you can leverage the tools that you already use to do that. Um, so whether that's an OmniSend or, or Klaviyo or, or any other system, we'll let that system know when someone mentions the brand. So, hey, this person literally just posted content about you. And then you can trigger automation off of that to automatically deliver the reward. Um, and people get really creative with the reward. It could be a gift. It could be a discount. It could be half a, you know, half off on the next month's subscription. And uh, most of the folks that get this will then actually use that incentive as well. And then I'll kind of wrap up here just with some, some what's kind of next this year and, and beyond. So I think the, the main trends we're seeing in 2021 is marketing teams are realizing that they have no bandwidth to do this at the nano and micro level. They need an automated solution that's scalable. You know, if some celebrity does come across their brand, sure, they can absolutely work with that person one-to-one. -one. But what about, you know, what about your, your loyal customers? What about folks that just have a few thousand? Um, usually they go completely ignored and, and people are catching on to that. Capturing social handle is becoming more ubiquitous. I think any customer data in general, you know, there's different values attributed to that, but people are realizing the value of knowing someone's level of influence, especially when it comes to email marketing or the support side. Lastly, just iterations on where merchants are like collecting the, the handle. You can do it at any point in the journey. And we're seeing some really interesting stuff there. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of wrap up um, just in general, if you don't know where to start, start with your customers. It's the quickest and easiest way to do it. You have customers out there that absolutely love you um, and they might be influential and we help you uncover that and you know help help you turn them into to the best advocates for you. And then, yeah, I just wanted to include too, we're doing a special offer uh, for this webinar where we'll, we'll give you 20% off for your first three months, totally month to month to get to know us. Um, so wanted to make sure I included that in here as well. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll pass that back over to you, Steve. All right, Bob, thank you so much for that. And you know what, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit before I pass the torch uh, over to OmniSend. What's interesting is like part of my day to day, as I mentioned, I get to talk about strategy and Gatsby is definitely on my radar uh, with the brands that I manage because they don't realize that there's a scalable solution and that's what your solution is, is where with the uh, Instagram handle, understanding the social footprint of someone on Instagram and then knowing based on filters, which I love with the platform, when you go into it, you're able to set a filter up and saying, hey, I'm looking to run a campaign based on some influencers in the 1,000 to 5,000, uh, you know, kind of follower range, um, if that's the campaign that you want to run or the nano one could be under 500, as you mentioned. And what's interesting about that is you can think about the campaign you want to do, but now we have the technology to look through APIs, to understand the social footprint of your customers. And then from there, you're able to reach out to them directly through the tool or ideally through OmniSend and then have it go out directly and starting a flow that way. Really, really interesting uh, platform. And thank you so much uh, for sharing that today, Bob. So uh, next up is going to be Greg Zakowitz um, from uh, the email and SMS uh, platform that once said I mentioned at the top of the show, it is um, a plus certified partner. Um, they have tens of thousands of brands that are using, I think the latest number probably upwards of 60 or 70,000 now. I'm sure uh, Greg knows the, the size, but it's just, it's nonstop growing up and to the right. And email and SMS is like a necessary piece of tech stack that has to be connected to your store. I know he's going to bring up a lot of different, uh, different uh, benchmarks and things to identify some opportunities of how you can increase sales through SMS and through email. So Greg, take it away. Thanks, Steve, and a great presentation, Bob. Uh, so as Steve mentioned, right, 60,000, you're right on, on par there. So okay. uh, just very quickly, we are, like mentioned, email SMS marketing automation platform. Uh, 
integrate with uh, e-commerce platforms across the board. You know, we have plug and play integrations with Shopify, Shopify Plus, BigCommerce, WooCommerce, uh, 3,500 five-star reviews on Shopify's app store. So, uh, you know, people are using us, people are loving us. We love them, which is always a great thing too, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I I'm excited to talk to you about email and SMS marketing benchmarks and, and more so looking at the benchmarks and trying to figure out how to use those to identify opportunities to increase your sales. Bob touched on a really key point there with resources and being able to scale things in email and SMS marketing, whatever you're doing. I think every speaker today will probably touch on resources at some point that, mm -hmm. you know, we just don't have 20 people on, on any e-commerce brands team to, uh, to dedicate to something specific. So how do we look at these metrics and then how do we capitalize on them to increase sales without the workload? Uh, to some degree. So last year we put out a uh, email and SMS benchmark report. It, you can find it at omnisend.com. It's not gated, it's just in the resource section. So go poke around it as you wish. We looked at over 10 billion emails, 31 million SMS and web push messages sent. And really at the end of the day, we come up with something like this, right? This big chart here up into the right. I think everyone likes up into the right charts, which is always a good thing. I, really what we're talking about and what why email and SMS are having such a great heyday. And it's not even the past year, right? COVID's kind of a lazy excuse, certainly has helped things, but this was always the way, right? That those narratives of email is dead have been greatly you know, exaggerated. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these are both opt-in channels, which is really important. And that's the point to make, right? So we talk about like own data, you quote unquote own the data, but it's first party data. And uh, I'm sure we'll have talks later about, you know, ROAS with social, uh, it was social spend and social advertising. We see the Facebook iOS uh, kind of break up, if you will, here. It looks like Android is going to be following that same suit by year end as well. So what does that mean? I'm not here to talk about what that means. We'll get that later. But when we own the data with first party data here, it gives us that window into uh, into consumers inboxes and onto their phones. And that's really important because we can always push that data through Omnisend as well, but push that data to then make your uh, social ads more profitable for you. So when you look at this here, I'm gonna focus my presentation mostly today on automations because that's where we're gonna maximize the sales without necessary workload. We're gonna let the money generate in the background. So automations, you can see conversion rates, they were they were pretty good before, but they've increased 95% uh, year over year, but you can see kind of the up and to the right. The campaigns, which are your scheduled promotional messages and your SMS, which are your bottom two lines, it doesn't look big, but they both increased the 100% year over year, 2020 uh, compared to 2019. So everything is going up, which really gives you this opportunity to then say, okay, if we're using automated messages and SMS because conversion rates are increasing and people are using them and it's first party data, now how do we break that down? So I would say, well, look at the automations that are going to get you the best bang for the buck. And if you're an e-commerce brand, you've probably heard this rhetoric and heard these things before, right? Welcome messages, card abandonment, very close to the money at that point. But these are things where you need to look and say, okay, where do I start? Where can I optimize what I'm doing from a conversion rate standpoint? And where can I get the best bang for the buck? So you can see welcome messages, you know, just to know we'll talk about pop-ups and things like that. It's the legs that feed the wolf. So welcome messages, they're converting very high. Well, why are they converting over 50%, which is a ridiculous number, by the way, <laughs> through the course of the year, I'm waiting for it to come down and it's not, you know, they're signing up because they're, they have an intent to purchase, whether from you or from someone else, that intent to purchase is there. So we want to capitalize upon that card abandonment. So we look at these and we say, how do we get the best bang for the buck here? And then we take those metrics, we compare them to what we're currently doing, or maybe messages that we don't have automated yet and say, okay, where can we implement first? get some revenue driving in the background and keep increasing. You know, so if we look at these automated message benchmarks and say, okay, open rates across the board, almost 33%, click to open rates, 20%, conversion rates, 30%. That's where we're at. Now, this is the important thing here is what percentage of sales from email are coming from these automated messages here. So last year, 30%, 29% of all email orders through, sent through Omnisend for from automated messages, less than 2% of the total email send volume. So if you think about, this is overly simplistic, but say, I'll never send another email again. I'm only going to automate things. Theoretically, you've maintained 30% of your sales. Now it's not that cut and dry, but if you think about, if I don't have five of these messages, how much sales am I leaving on the table there? So when we look at those benchmarks, we say, okay, automated messages, where can we implement and where can we optimize? 
welcome series. It's a no brainer, 50% conversion rate. Well, why are they signing up? How can we optimize these things? Well, think about that path. Can we capture people that sign up while they're viewing men's shoes and also capture people that are viewing women's swimsuits at the same time, because we can customize a dedicated welcome series to those people, mm -hmm. right? We can also look at it. Uh, if they get the same welcome message, one clicks on men's shoes in the navigation bar, one clicks on women's swimsuits, what's our second and third message we can deliver in the welcome series. So we're looking at optimizing. The same thing happens for cart abandonment. Do you have free shipping over $35 and is their cart $25? Well, our value adds that we want to promote in that message now should be around free shipping and getting that average order value up. The $200 cart, you know, we want to talk about hassle-free returns or customer service guarantees, things that would matter to them, not the free shipping because that's expected and already qualified. Also look at purchaser behavior. Are they a first-time purchaser? Are they a one-time purchaser now leaning toward the second? Are they a loyal customer that might dictate your, uh, your incentive strategy or how many messages you deliver to them. So there's all these different ways we can take these benchmarks and say, okay, what matters along the customer journey front and how do we deliver it to them? And then we wanna look at adding the other channels. SMS is that rising channel. So I think the important thing with SMS is it's quickly becoming a must have marketing channel. It's no longer kind of this nice to have. Everyone texts, right? It's not the lazy generational cohort narrative that we've been hearing about for the years. I am a Gen Xer. Uh, I text, my parents are baby boomers. They text, millennials are now in their young 40s. So they are texting. And Gen Zs are now in their young 20s. If you think about that, this young demographic, they're still young, but this young demographic in the 20s, everyone texts. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And we're seeing everyone start to adopt to this. Now, what this looks like from our standpoint is last year, we sent nearly 400% more SMS marketing messages than we did in 2019. That is a huge increase. Mm -hmm. But even so, you can see a lot of times you'll see conversion rates or click rates start to decline as the more you use something. We're seeing the opposite, right? You can see almost quarter over quarter for the last two years, we're seeing those conversion rates increase. Mm -hmm. Now, we have, uh, we have customers who are using SMS all across the board, different places, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Eat Meal Guilt Free is one of those. They're getting a 33% click-through rate on their SMS messages. But here's where I look with SMS. I go, when the rubber hits the road, where are brands using it? Are consumers using it? And if you're an e-commerce brand, you're looking at the Q4 holidays, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So how are consumers on this heavy inbox day, heavy promotional day, heavy social ad day, how are consumers adopting to SMS? And pretty well, the answer is. So Black Friday, Cyber Monday, those two days combined this past year. They sent more SMS messages than they did the entire November of 2019, so on two days. Wow. And then if you look at conversions this year, Black Friday, which was the number one SMS send day for us for the past year, 19% uh, of all November SMS orders came on that one day. So on this, this the second busiest shopping day of the year, email inboxes are being flooded, email conversion rates are skyrocketing, brands are sending SMS to kind of cut through that clutter or to send last chance messages and they're converting extremely well for them. So when we look at SMS, how do we then capitalize upon it? Well, I mentioned add it to your workflows, right? So we can, in the same workflow, we can capture if, are you an SMS subscriber, are you not? And then we can customize our messaging. So maybe it's a last chance reminder for welcome incentive or we're expiring your shopping cart or whatever it might be, thanks for your order. We can now communicate with the customer via the channel they chose with the messaging and in whatever they want the way they want to be communicated with. Now for OmniSend, if you're on a pro or above plan, we'll also, uh, we'll also give you SMS credits on a, based on whatever your contract is for that month, whatever you're paying that month. So it's actually risk-free, right? It, it's free at that point. Uh, card abandonment, give you an example, Carrot, Sequestrian Apparel, another customer of ours, they use a SMS in their card abandonment workflow, 15% conversion rate, earning per message, right around three bucks. So it's working well for them. It's just about communicating with people at the time they want to be communicated with. And I think the important thing here is we're not through this pandemic by any stretch of the imagination, but we're starting to get to a little more like life as, as we knew it. So as people start getting on the go, I'm booking vacations already, right? I'm trying to get out of here. Uh, you know, it's a great on the go channel because people are, are opting it there. Uh, you can see the caveat at the very bottom here. So if you're a cannabis CBD brand, US or Canada, it's going to be blocked. We expect this to be, can be uh, kind of worldwide. So I would probably just avoid it if you're a cannabis and CBD brand at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, but look for opportunities to use your SMS marketing in your uh, automation and you will 
use that marketing automation, you'll start to see some of those revenues. So again, it's all about using it to your advantage. These are all opt-in channels, which means if people don't want them, they don't have to opt into them. So start collecting them, see how it goes from that point. And uh, we also have an offer, you can see it on the screen there. So 30% off for three months on Standard Pro. There's the promo code, just do no 30X3. If you need to contact us, my email is right there for you as well, and omnisend.com. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I talked really fast, but I got through it. Uh, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen to kick it back to you, Steve, yeah. and over to you, Chad. Well, thank you so much, uh, Greg. Massively appreciate that. Um, I would concur about the SMS uh, component and how important it is. Um, I think about the attention that is uh, received by your target audience. Everybody has their phone right beside them all the time. Um, and, you know, even post pandemic, there's still going to be people who are still going to be carrying their phones with them wherever they go. And that's one way of getting the attention of the customer if it's a cart recovery. Um, so it sounds like all the automation things can still all work as needed, uh, along with the campaign side of it. So the flows and campaigns can all work from SMS, you can get all these opt ins. And one little thing to note too, that I that I just absolutely love about Omnisend is, is that the brands that I manage are always worried about the fact that what happens if I have an email and I have an SMS opt-in, um, am I going to be spamming these people or do they get the same message to the same uh, at the same time? And the reality is no, the customer can choose how they want to be interacted with. And so if it turns out that the channel of choice is SMS for them, then they can use SMS. And so there's never a worry. So for those listening today, if you've not kind of upgraded, so to speak, into a much more robust kind of uh, marketing automation platform of email and SMS, they both work, they both work like synonymously together um, independently. And so you're never going to spam anybody. So that's really good news. Next up is uh, Chad Rubin, as you can see by the slide. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Chad is the uh, co-founder of a company called Skubana. Um, published authors, interesting. Also, uh, I read recently, and I think I gave you some kudos on social, uh, there was an acquisition that happened recently uh, with a company called 3PL Central. So it's a very large uh, 3PL company with multiple warehouses um, all around. Um, and now they've integrated both their physical locations and the, the Skibana platform and their technology. So they actually kind of work together. So it's quite interesting. So I'll pass it over to you, uh, Chad, and you Thank can you, uh, know more details. Steve, I would love to catch up. Also, <laughs> wonderful introduction of all the, the members on this call. So fantastic job. Wealth of information. Uh, like Steve shared, I'm Chad Rubin, co-founder of Skubana and also an e-commerce brand. Uh, started back in, let's see, 2007 now. Mm. And today we're going to talk about inventory. Uh, it's probably not the most sexy topic of all the topics. Uh, but you know what they say is that what wins games is not just a good offense, but a good defense. Mm. So for me, what Stubana is, and Steve comes from Shopify, and so we are the sort of peanut butter to their jelly, right? So if Shopify is everything that, that, that helps you make more money in the world, the digital shelf space, uh, a point of sale system, Stubana is everything on the back end or the middle of the business, I call it the messy middle, to run and operate the business. So it helps you manage multiple warehouses like he had shared. It helps you sell in multiple channels and it's a system. It's a common operating language for you to actually scale and automate your business. We have a lot of Shopify Plus merchants on the platform. Uh, Rachel Zoe, Victoria Beckham, Siete Chips, uh, some great and impressive D2C brands that also maybe started off D2C and now are actually going direct to everywhere and some great retail brands that are now really doubling down on D2C. So we're going to talk about just some KPIs to track and in inventory. Uh, and coming from the brand side, I, I can speak really, uh, this is really close to my heart because essentially these KPIs are ones that I track in my own business today. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just sharing with you how I do it. So if there's, if there's a dashboard you're looking to build in your business to manage to, this is the place to look at. And so you've got, you know, your, you look at your uh, revenue percentage contribution, not, not only geographically, uh, but also of your SKU portfolio, also your unit sales percentage changes. Uh, today, we're gonna focus on some of those along with the right-hand side here, the rate of sale, which is your velocity uh, and your average inventory and your turns of your inventory specifically. So the first one we're gonna get into is inventory turns. Now, the, this is the what, right? This is the, the formula to do it, but why should you care, right? And the more you turn inventory, you, the more you can convert that inventory into cash because your inventory is tied up in cash. A lot of people see inventory 
as an asset. And that's how it's booked by your accountant, but it really is a liability until you can turn it. So the more you can turn your inventory, the more you can actually reinvest in the business and the more you can scale it. So, and if it's slow, if your turns are slow, you're going to be stuck with stale inventory and you can't pump that money back into the business or even take dividends off the business itself. So it's a critical formula. Uh, I suggest, and here's the, you know, what you can pull out, right? Cost of goods sold. Uh, at Subana, we track first in, first out cost of goods sold. And you divide that by the average inventory value. You can pull all of that out of Subana to really track and manage your team to the proper expectations that you have for them and incentivize them on that. I've done a lot of research and there's not a lot, not a whole lot out there, which is a sparked interest in Subana to actually perhaps create like an industry standard categorized based on, uh, so let's just say it's automotive parts versus clothing versus CPG. But essentially this is the number that we've found is that essentially a good inventory turn ratio, and this is industry agnostic, is somewhere between five to 10 for most industries, which means that you're actually turning and restocking your inventory, replenishing every one to two months. It's to me, it almost sounds like just in time inventory, but not just quite. Uh, but this is a efficiency metric that you could be managing to. I think that's a little bit much for my own e commerce business that I still manage today, mm -hmm. but I think it's. Uh, it's a great aspiration to manage to. And it really depends on the industry that you're in and how close your suppliers are. So a few things that you can do to improve your turns. So one of them I think is really important is product bundling. So taking a slow moving item and pairing it with a high moving item, one that has a lot of velocity can help you move and convert that stale item into cash. They can then redeploy into the business and maybe decide to sunset that item. Uh, changes to your marketing promotion. This is either going more heavy and spending more, figuring out how to liquidate that item to just remove it from your stock level, or perhaps even if there's not a whole lot of demand, maybe lowering the price, which will which which will increase the demand for the product. Uh, improving your replenishment, of course. And then lastly is like reviewing your portfolio of your SKUs frequently to figure out what those turns that are. What is the average turns in your business across the entire portfolio? What's the subset of that across the catalog itself? And then break that down and really stack rank your portfolio so you can figure out really where do you want to be deploying your capital? I think as a CEO and as a co-founder, our job is to be a proper steward of capital, mm -hmm. to usher the capital appropriately uh, in the way that you see fit. And I think this is a great KPI to do that. Essentially, you know, on our blog, and here's a bit.ly link, we actually have a calculator for inventory turn. So if you're wondering like, hmm, how do I do this? Should I do it? Should I not do it? Just throw those numbers into this calculator and Subana will spit, spit that out for you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great way to just get a quick and dirty assessment on how you're doing and how efficient you are as a business. And so you can see the bit.ly link here at the bottom. And then the last thing I wanted to share is it's not just about turns. It's also about turning the right items. Uh, you can be turning very low margin items, but if you're turning high profit items, uh, of course, you're going to generate a whole lot more absolute dollars for the business. And so we at Subana, we have a SKU profitability report, which is essentially every SKU, every channel, no matter where you sell, we pull in all the fees associated with those, along with the discounts, for example, from Shopify, uh, all your fees, for example, from Amazon, and we create a stack rank report of your fee, your profit per SKU per channel, including all your fees, including your shipping costs in one report. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty, it's what I call the mic drop report. Feel free to check it out. So it's interesting. You got to know what, when is the right time to reorder. And so here's again, the what we, we want to, we want to talk about the what, but more importantly, we want to understand the why. And you want to have a reorder point because you want to manage your stock levels and your reorder points appropriately. You want to replenish your inventory to ensure that your business has a competitive advantage and an edge. Because if you run out of stock, you can't make money. And if you order too much, you've got that cash sitting up. So it's actually finding the right balance between that. Uh, and essentially in the old days, you create a reorder point and essentially you're stuck to it, you're tied to it. It's not dynamic, it's static. And so this reorder point essentially is individualized, it's per SKU and it should be a in a dynamic way. So SKUBANA actually will automatically create you a reorder point for you based on your lead time, based on the vendor, based on the cost and actually do one more thing, which is create you a purchase order awaiting approval. So again, strong offense, strong defense and trying to figure out softwares that actually give you a competitive advantage is very important. So you wanna automate and of course, there's my personal email address for those that want to respond back. And if you're interested 
or if you want to even just chat, you can email me. If you're interested in Stubana, there's two months free. Just email me. Thank you so much, uh, Chad, for that. Um, one question I have before I uh, pass the baton over to uh, David over at W Promote. What sort of sweet spot do you find uh, of a merchant that would get the most value? Let's say someone that's more in their early stage of their of their journey. Is there is a certain sweet spot of, of customer that you feel can get the most amount of value out of uh, the insights that Scubana uh, has available yeah. to them? Yeah. So for us, we're not entry level software. So right. as your business scales and as complexities increase, we thrive on complexity. So if you're on multiple warehouses or you have multiple channels and you're trying to manage that efficiency efficiently and balance your inventory ap uh, across the appropriate warehouses, you're trying to uh, create purchase orders and understand your velocity across those channels. Right. That is where Scubana fits in. People come to us typically where they're like, okay, my systems are broken. Right. I either need to go big with something like NetSuite or I want something that's nimble and agile, that's strong, that's intuitive, like Scubana, that's more modern. Beautiful. And so that's typically where we're positioned. Thank you for that clarity. So uh, next up is uh, going to be David uh, Duick, who is the VP of uh, paid media for a very large agency partner uh, called W Promote. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about today about um, just return on ad spend, uh, what's been happening, I believe, since uh, iOS 14.5, uh, iOS 15 now, and now things going on with Google. It's so interesting in this cookie, this world, and just the unique angles that W Promote goes on um, to really help their businesses and their brands to grow and scale based on ROAS. And so, uh, David, I'll let you uh, take it away. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, yes, I'm David Dweck, our VP of paid media over here at W Promotes. I want to go through a couple of quick things on revisiting e-commerce benchmarks in the new world we're living in in terms of tracking and privacy. So the first thing I want to talk about is creating a roadmap to improve e-commerce measurement. So as marketers, we spend a ton of time over here on the left. We spend a ton of time telling, uh, telling our, our consumers and brands that clicks really matter and they should be focused on click measurement after that conversion measurement, making sure that we actually pixel sites and track everything. We've gotten to a place kind of here in the middle where a lot of brands are tracking revenue and return ad spend. Um, what we like to do a, a, is to take things a bit further, which is profit modeling with e-commerce measurement. So we've gotten to the point now where we can measure gross profits and return on investment at a macro level. So not just return on ad spend, but taking in other factors through some of the data sources and APIs we have. And uh, we've had success in taking clients to what we deem to be the holy grail of, of e-commerce measurement, which is customer equity and predictive customer lifetime value through some of the models we've built. So what we're able to do is take um, e-commerce feeds that we're running cam campaigns for across Facebook, Google, Amazon, et cetera, um, and custom mark up different columns within our feeds to make sure that we're actually optimizing and telling the, the search engines, social networks, e-commerce marketplaces to actually optimize towards customer lifetime value. We've gotten to a point now where AI and, and automated bidding is extremely strong across all the partners that uh, we're running e-commerce campaigns with. It's now getting to the point where to continue to have a leg up on the competition as an advertiser, you really should be pushing more towards customer equity, predictive, predictive customer lifetime value. So that way you're a step ahead and you're not just bidding on, um, you know, potentially bidding to, to bring somebody back in the fold based on return ad spend who might be a current customer of yours that is already converted spend that money on new customer acquisition or customers who are gonna spend more with you over the, the lifetime of a customer of your brand. So ultimately this is kind of the measurement journey, but we wanna see uh, more and more brands moving further over to the right where they're looking at gross profit, customer equity, and then ultimately predictive customer lifetime value as a measurement source. Taking things a step further, we often get uh, a ton of questions from our clients. What else should we, should we be looking at to measure the efficacy of our campaigns? It, it goes beyond just one one metric, if it's ROAS, customer lifetime value, whatever it might be, there are other proxies that indicate success and other proxies that will help brands expand and scale their campaigns. So um, where, you know, when we look at and talk to our, our clients, a lot of them are all measuring ROAS, right? We've gotten to the point where clients are now measuring return ad spend very effectively. When we take things a step further and ask cl uh, customers and our even our campaign managers how to optimize their campaigns if ROAS drops off a cliff, there's very few people who are set up to do this well. And that goes back to how they're thinking about their, their campaigns as a whole. So taking a step back, marketing is beyond just that, that end result. We want to see clients and advertisers really getting a grounded understanding of who their customers are, what actions they're taking on their pathway to purchase. So that way we can do a better job of messaging what we have as a brand to consumers, right? So if we know that customers are, are hitting three, three product pages before purchasing a product, we know that we should probably optimize those pages to 
to offer more cross sell opportunities to, to drive that purchase a bit quicker or offer more um, a better product diversification to increase your, your cart size. So what does this really look like? Uh, we like to call it e-commerce gamification at W Promote. So what we're looking for is to drive more insight, strategy and outcomes via revised measurements. So we're trying to go from optimizing and measuring a few meaningful KPIs to optimizing and measuring more proxy KPIs, which will help uncover trends, efficiency and scale for, for any brand running campaigns across paid media platforms. Um, so what does this really look like? The current format, again, we're talking about uh, advertisers are measuring mainly sales, revenue, average order value, return ad spend as their main proxies. The evolution we're trying to take here for our advertisers is adding on additional proxies. So the main four, but also things like how many people are adding products to their cart, how many have started the checkout process, how many have visited three plus product pages, visit the FAQ page, perform an on-site search, which is an amazing proxy we've seen for, for driving outcomes and conversions percentage of new visitors to a site, percentage of new of return visitors to a site, all these proxies will give a really good sense of how effective your campaigns are. But more importantly, you can uh, leverage these, create a weighting system for these proxies to actually look at a more holistic view of, of outcomes and actually optimize a bit differently. So um, from a formula perspective, what we're talking about is really going from the old, right? Revenue divided by cost to something that's a bit different, something that's a bit more nuanced that will give advertisers a bit more um, back in terms of the measurement they're getting from their campaigns, but also the ability to scale their campaigns in other areas where they're seeing those who view three plus product pages or you know, about the quarter, a quarter of a value for those who have converted. So, right, so like we should optimize towards that, that angle, but we've optimized now uh, measurement to the place where we're looking at um, e-commerce measurement that includes revenue, those who've added products to their cart, PDPs, um, those who started the checkout and then dividing all that by, by your cost to give you a new proxy for overall success. So really we're trying to report, report on overall um, revenue, overall engagement um, and outcomes that are being driven through e-commerce campaigns. It goes well beyond, again, just, just revenue and ROAS measurement. That is a pathway uh, really down a dark hole where you'll optimize to a place where you're not seeing much more growth. We wanna get clients expanding out of that. We're phenomenal driving um, outcomes based on ROAS, but it's it's far, far more difficult to drive both efficiency and scale. And this is an approach that we've seen work really well for our e-commerce advertisers the last couple of years. Um, so from a scenario standpoint, worst case scenario, you know more about your customer, what actions are driving from their campaigns. And that's that's really you know, the end result, right? Worst case scenario, you've learned a lot and you, you move forward. Best case scenario, gamification helps improve, helps improve performance. This is what we've seen um, across the board for our clients and not just in, in e-commerce uh, for lead gen, subscription-based services, anything uh, that has a direct result to outcome, we're, we're able to measure more effectively through through additional proxies. Um, so gamification works. It's uh, one of the main trends the last decade and take advantage of it for your advertising purposes. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on was around uh, updates for iOS 14.5. As one of the largest uh, agencies in the US and the largest advertiser on Facebook, we have a unique view into performance um, since iOS 14.5 rolled out on Facebook. So we wanna kind of share some of what's behind the curtain on, on this webinar and to give you guys a sense of really what's trended since uh, iOS 14.5 rolled out. There's all this doom and gloom speak, a lot of people prognosticating about what would actually occur. So uh, our data set's pretty statistically significant. It goes across every industry that exists. It goes from clients who are spending $500 a month with, with us to clients who are spending over $5 million a month. So it spans the gamut across industries and spends to give a sense of, of what's going on. So, so I didn't send magnifying glasses to everybody who's, who's <laughs> doing this. So don't worry about uh, trying to read any of this on the left. But the main trends we're seeing since iOS 14.5 rolled out in April um, uh, is ROAS is trending downward. It's not significant, but we are seeing softening in terms of both return on ad spend and cost per action. Um, which is trending in the opposite direction upwards, but in the negative direction. Oddly, conversion rate is trending up though, in the right direction. We're, mm. uh, we've dug into this a bit and we're thinking that it mainly has to do with better targeting specifically with custom audiences and first party data. We're seeing conversion rate increases specifically from these, these audiences where you have really strong first party data. We've done a lot of work um, with our head of marketing or email marketing, Mike DiBella at W Promote on, on um, tying first party data that's collected through email into Facebook more uh, or far quicker through just Uno and, and other platforms like that. And it's uh, definitely helped drive results for our clients, but we're definitely seeing custom audiences and first party data work really well, um, even in a post iOS 14.5 world. 
our thing is that since Facebook has far fewer signals to optimize off of now, that the signals advertisers are providing to the social networks are actually driving um, significant results for, for clients. So uh, focus on there. Um, and then from a delivery engagement standpoint, CPMs are going up, CPC is trending down. So the cost to, to target users effectively um, and the volume is, is still there. So it, it, there you know, hasn't been a, a paucity of advertisers or advertisers fleeing the platform. There are still a ton at, uh, on the platform actively trying to, to, to advertise. What we are seeing from this though, is that again, we're, our inference is that Facebook is still trying to figure out how to effectively target people with CBC is specifically trending in the wrong direction, CTR trending in the wrong direction. Our inference is that Facebook's ability to know which users are gonna drive which outcomes for advertisers has gone down a bit. So they're still trying to uh, figure out their own algorithms to, to get back to the place where if you have a campaign optimized towards CPCs or reach, um, or sorry, towards clicks or reach, that those are, are optimized effectively um, based on the signals Facebook has. So definitely a, a worth thing, a bit of a signal gap there on the Facebook side. So what can we do? Uh, diversify platforms, right? So get off of, you know, just try and take some of your advertising dollars in the social world off of Facebook on the places like Snap, where we've seen a ton of success, TikTok, mm -hmm. right, as, right as well. All emerging platforms where we've seen uh, DR, perform, or DR campaigns perform extremely well. Um, activate Instagram shops, Instagram checkout for more of a closed loop advertising shopping journey. So keeping that experience within the wall garden of Facebook and Instagram has worked extremely well. In, again, increasing the use of first party data, integrate as much of your email campaigns, SMS campaigns, try and pipe in as much first party data you have into the, into the Facebook platform. It works extremely well. And then Activate a full funnel strategy on Facebook. Make sure you're targeting people based on the signals Facebook does have, right? So if it's first party signals, great, but Facebook's also great for doing, you know, retargeting within their wall garden, within their platform where you can actually retarget people based on video views, impressions, clicks, and trying to use those signals to, to push people down funnel versus the ones that we've all relied on as advertisers and the algorithms we've relied on as advertisers. So that's uh, the last piece I've got to touch on. So. Uh, I don't have any deals to offer, but you're welcome to email me and, and yeah. talk to me whenever you like. Uh, if you're brand looking to grow, we'd love to to start a conversation and see if uh, it's, a, it's a match made in heaven. So uh, thanks, Steve, and the Just Uno team for, for having me on. Yeah, great. Thank you so much, uh, David, for uh, for sharing that. It's just nice to have just-in-time information about what's actually going on. It's nice to see that, uh, that it's not all doom and gloom when it comes to uh, iOS 14.5 because um, that's been on a conversation of a lot of the brands that I deal with and you see a lot of content being produced around the web sharing what they believe is going to happen but now uh, with you being the largest kind of digital marketing partner um, in the US um, it's interesting with the amount of data you have and your own proprietary kind of data warehouse you're able to look at all this data and you're proving it right now <laughs> with magnifying glass but the fact that it's actually not as horrible as you think and you know the reality is is that think about your first party data I think it's one of my takeaways that I'm thinking right now is, is that um, if you're more of an early stage company um, and you feel that maybe things aren't, uh, your return on ad spend isn't as great as you hoped it would be or should be, uh, one thing you might want to think about is your retention strategies and how you're dealing with what information's inside Shopify and can I maximize lifetime value of my existing customers and can I trigger, uh, you know, through OmniSend, can I uh, find out and trigger certain events based on their journey or their life cycle, this RFM, recency frequency monetization strategy. So I think there's some opportunities uh, available to the data that's inside Shopify, but as it relates to how you're interacting with your existing customers. The top of funnel is another interesting conversation for another webinar about how do we um, at scale, and I think that's what W Promote does well, is trying to understanding it's more than just clicks and, uh, and, and these sorts of things. It's much more about the trends and kind of where things are headed, um, and then being able to uh, sync up to other platforms and be, have a more diversified approach or more um, omni-channel or a full funnel kind of approach to all the channels that are out there and try and test with TikTok and, and, uh, and all other platforms. So it's pretty cool. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. So uh, last but certainly not least, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Steph uh, Carmeco, Carmeco, and make sure I had the name correct, uh, but she is the uh, customer success strategist for um, Just Uno. And I think she's going to talk a little bit today about the platform itself um, and exactly, I guess, the main benefits of why someone would want to use the Just Uno platform. Um, they connect to a lot of the most popular CMSs out there, Shopify being one. Um, what's interesting, though, is the platform itself really helps you acquire both email, 
um, and SMS opt-ins, but it has a lot of other pieces of the puzzle. And there's even a, a, a Just Duno Plus feature now available where you actually get a strategist and someone who can actually help you um, with machine learning and some AI benefits that they have built into their platform. So it's very, very interesting. So I'm excited to learn myself today about uh, the latest and greatest when it comes to Just Duno. So, all right, uh, Steph, you can take it away. Thank you so much, Steve. And thank you, everyone. I have learned so much so far. <laughs> yes. So looking forward to continuing this. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. All right, awesome. Thank you, Steve. So yes, today I'm going to be reviewing the benchmarks associated with pop-ups and e-commerce. And pop-ups can mean a lot right now. So go ahead and get into this. So starting out, uh, we have pop-ups by type. So that can be style and location, really where we're presenting these these promotions and messages. Of course, we also have pop-ups by offer and purpose. So another way to think about how it's best to present, uh, present anything that is really intriguing or makes sense for a visitor to see. And then of course, we do have notes on mobile versus desktop. Um, majority of our visitors are exploring on, on both devices. Um, and it's really great to see how they're behaving on each device. All right, just a quick snap shot of the data that we have here. And this is really what we're pulling um, our recommendations from as strategists. So we can see average time on site, average page count. These are all, this is all data that we're able to see in the back end of a Just You Know admin. And we can be very specific related to the type of visitor and uh, the type of traffic source that they're coming from. So starting off pop-ups, we want to think about location. So choosing the place where your pop-up is really going to be the best fit for your website and kind of how you want to show yourself to your visitors, um, as well as knowing when really to showcase that message to that specific visitor. So criteria that we want to think about, the message itself, is this appropriate, appropriate for that type of visitor? Um, is there any kind of offer related to that? course, our target audience. Right now, maybe a first-time visitor or a seasoned shopper is where we're at. We can get really granular based on uh, their previous purchase or a very specific product that they might have had, um, even down to the number of visits, of course. And then how aggressive would we want to be? Do we want to have an action there? Like in this example, we see a coupon code. Or is it more just to be informative and give more of that value prop or social proof? Again, that goes back to what is this visitor, what got this visitor here and ideally what's going to keep them there in, able to, in order to convert. All right, so just a quick snapshot of some numbers that we have from our benchmarks report based on location. So when you think about a website, you know, we do see the banners, we do see center promotions, and then we get sides and corner promotions. So when you think about, and when you look at this engagement rate with this conversion rate, it's important to think, about what kind of engagement you're wanting to get here. So a banner, maybe that's just a coupon code that we have. That conversion rate, we would like it to be a little higher in that case. If we're looking at a center promotion, maybe that engagement is an email capture. Um, and thinking about if we have an offer related to that, and then also looking at how that might impact our average order value. Again, with the location, the more that we are um, more aggressive in showing that promotion, whether it's a center, promotion or a banner that's just existing on your website, the more engaging it will be. And that's because it is right in your face and it's meant to elicit that engagement. While we do have those center pops as the most popular locations maybe to place this because of that higher engagement, other, case, other locations that we see do tend to have that higher rate of, of conversion. And that can just speak to the quality of of the lead that you may be getting, uh, the value of that lead if we look at an average order value at the end of that, and knowing that, okay, sometimes we need to look at that conversion rate overall rather than engagement, um, and it comes down to knowing your KPIs in that. So what is the goal of your promotion, and what is the most effective way to deliver this message? Thinking through that, there may be many options to this. A, B, test that. That's a feature that's within just Uno and it allows for effective testing. In that kind of testing, you wanna look at around 30 days, um, maybe 10,000 sessions, depending on your traffic level, just to get a good sense of how visitors are behaving in a month, considering paychecks um, and how they're spending their money. I know the pandemic has 
thrown a wrench in how how people may spend and is causing uh, just different spending habits in general. So we're looking at skewed results in a way, but it's a lot of people are learning during this time too, learning how they want to shop um, in different ways to shop. So just something to consider when you're thinking about intent. All right, pop-ups by purpose, so uh, messaging. So that would be a no form included. And then another purpose could be for a lead capture. So everyone's touched on that quite a bit. And I love that because just, you know, is such a great integration to enhance that, that information that you're looking to pass or take advantage of. So lead capture can be anything from email, SMS, um, Gatsby sending over that information related to influencers. Um, so anything that you're wanting to capture as far as uh, information can sit under this lead capture. Mm -hmm. um, and we do see engagement rate, conversion rate, and average order value here. So keeping in mind that this is a great example of seeing our lead capture had lower engagement overall compared to a no form type of pop-up. Uh, but conversion rate was around, was at 35.5% and even a higher average order value. Um, so understanding what will really increase that engagement, if that's the goal, you know, we want to build our list. I'm so down for that. And I think there's a time and place to really want to build on that and then to move over into our conversion and average order uh, mentality. So a few examples for us that I wanted to call out and just wanting to point out what the purpose may be here. And these are different companies. You can use this kind of um, setup in different ways. So for example, this first one, we're looking to get an additional 10% off when you choose a color. So we already see that with quilt cover. Okay, so this one has, potentially they have an item in cart and we're looking to provide another offer to them. We're already giving them that next uh, apologies. We're already giving them that next step here. <laughs> See, I wanted to click on it <laughs> to choose my color. And when we're wanting to, when we're giving that next step and just a little bit more insight, making it a little easier, that's going to increase our engagement as well as just being really clear on what our offer is. So this is something that could be firing whenever someone has something in cart. Uh, they could have already purchased a product before and maybe we're welcoming them with this kind of offer. Moving on, we do have our add a money clip. So this looks like it's taking us directly to a product page or maybe a category page. So depending on what they already have in their cart, this would be a really great just way to explore and highlight other products in your line at the moment. All right, just a second, get 15% off when you sign up today. So just a second, this could be used as our welcome in that lead capture. Um, of course, we could A-B test this and incorporate that ask for the Instagram handle and send that on. Um, and then see how many coupon codes are used with that uh, by setting up a static coupon code and then tracking that at the end of around 30 days. Over here, we've got try your bag 30 days risk-free, return to my cart. So this is telling me I already got a product in my cart. Looks like I was attempting to leave and I'm trying to be directed back to my cart. This is a full page takeover. So we could say it's a little bit more aggressive, but overall we're giving them that 30 days risk-free. It feels like an offer. It feels like this is something that's valuable to this specific visitor um, instead of maybe a 10% offer, for example. Uh, a great thing to test with your different segments. All right, so a few examples of by type when we're thinking about pop-ups. So these are more just, uh, you could use these as a template when you're thinking about building out these really unique area or really unique touch points. So we have location for lead captures. Ideally, we're sticking around a center pop-up designed to capture attention, target audience, new visitors likely to purchase um, in stages with low intent. And our messaging can really vary dependent on what our newsletter or what our cadence is really about. Moving on to shipping thresholds. This is really great to tell the visitor where they're at, how much more they have to go. It almost feels like a game on site as well. Um, not as invasive. We're thinking more of a banner in this case. Um, and then letting them know as they are adding to their cart, how much more they have left. And last, a really great one, social proof. Social media is is everywhere. So of course we want to have social proof. Uh, the corner slide and pop-up is ideal for this one. It's someone that is really interested in your site, 
maybe looking around, wanting a little bit more information, comparing prices maybe. And we want to give them the idea in the sense that others have purchased here, they have had success or have liked the product, and this might be a good fit for you too. So not as in your face, but helpful along the way. All right, so by offer a few stats that we can check out. Offer type, if there's no coupon, we have around a 13% engagement rate. If we do have a coupon, we see that increase in engagement. So people are just ready to click on that coupon code or ready, ready to use it. Conversion rate, when we do have the coupon code available, we do see that higher at 34.46. And our average order value is lower. So in this sense, I would say, okay, our coupon code could have had an impact on that. And thinking, is that okay with me or with the company? Or are we looking more for that engagement or conversion here? And then buy offer. So on average, promotions with coupon codes do result in higher engagement and conversion. Um, so when we're thinking about this offer, we want to think about that type of visitor and what really fits for them. Um, that goes back to what have they purchased before? What ad are they visiting from? We can use that UTM and target them very specifically. Maybe it's on welcome, or maybe we save that, um, that offer for an exit because we see that that source that from paid media, whichever it may be, has that higher exit rate or bounce rate. So targeting those specific moments of, of that specific visitor are really ideal and where this offer comes into play when adding it to a coupon. All right, and then when we think about by style, of course here on the right, we see so many different options and style is really about how you're presenting it within the coupon. So for example, we have timers, had that sense of urgency, spin to wins, uh, we also call that gamification. So it, it's just a true game that you're playing on your website or that a visitor can engage with. Um, anything from getting an offer to a free gift. A tap to text, that's on a mobile device. And with that, we're actually able to have the visitor open up their own texting app and send the message to opt-in to SMS. So very interactive in that sense. We can look at text ticker, slot machines. Um, style is really dependent on what you think your visitors will be most likely to engage with. Maybe it isn't so much of a spin to win. <laughs> Maybe just that timer is going to be enough for us. So a few different numbers to look at here. Uh, engagement rate, conversion rate, average order value. Um, when I'm working with clients and strategizing what kind of style we wanna go for, um, we're always open for an A-B test. We're always thinking what other visitors, um, what visitors may want and how they are behaving. Some clients have this data read readily available um, others, we have to do some, some testing and use some forms within Just Juno you know, to learn more about that visitor and know which style ad may, may yield either that higher engagement um, or even average order value. So touch on this right here for mobile versus desktop pop-ups. Those experiences are different uh, naturally because of the design and because of the features that we have associated with each one. Um, when we see that mo mobile coming into the e-commerce world as a place where you can really go to research and convert, we don't see as many converting um, when it comes to those bigger purchases on mobile. So it's more of that perhaps they have a comfort on your desktop version. Um, perhaps mobile isn't really where it needs to be right now to, to also get that conversion for us. So considering where they're making that purchase or where they may be having trouble making that purchase um, is a great start to consider what different offers to have or what different styles of pop-ups to have on each, on each version or device. A few different numbers for us. On mobile, we see conversion rate 25.53 and desktop around 38.46. Everyone's different in this for sure. You know, more people may be browsing on your mobile um, and then, sorry, purchasing on your mobile and browsing on desk. This is where those unique messages and, and looking at engagement really comes into play. So back to desktop pop-ups. Um, this is a great one to have, you know, desktop has been around and it's something that we have been optimizing. And we see that those that engage with a desktop pop-up that contains that form usually are converting at that higher rate compared to those desktop um, experiences that do not have a form or those pop-ups that do not have a form. So when I think about this, it's a really great way to take advantage of that really full display of what your brand is on a website. 
mobile is amazing and it's growing as far as the what you can do and the access that you have as far as apps and being able to purchase um, within within social media as well. So thinking about desktop should not be uh, something that's forgotten. It's absolutely somewhere where we can gather more data, uh, learn really learn more about our customers and visitors at the end of the day. So we did mention before that we, we have our Just You Know Plus um, program. And what that is, is it allows you to work with a strategist um, more hands-on in that setup to assist you with those integrations, assist you with A-B testing, and also providing that level of what's really working um, with, other, with other clients and what we're seeing as trends. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email um, or reach out in any way. Happy, happy to help. Thank you so much, Steph. I really appreciate it. This has been like, like, you know, I, I look at my notebook here and I've scrambled down so many notes. I've learned so much. <laughs> it's just life of learning, right? I mean, that's kind of the whole, the whole process of just being an entrepreneur is that, you know, you just have to always uh, just grow and learn. And, you know, I actually went and printed off this little paper. As soon as we were talking about it, I thought, wow, this is really powerful stuff. Uh, learning about pop-ups and types and examples and, you know, lead captures and shipping thresholds and social proof. This is the kind of information that can differentiate your brand and it's worth A-B testing. And that's why I think Just Uno has got, got it right on the money. And I'm going to be sharing this with the brands that I manage. So this is pretty much uh, the wrap up for uh, today's webinar. Thank you so much. I know it went a little bit longer than anticipated, but I'm hoping that you're getting a tremendous amount of value from all of these partners that came on today. Gatsby, uh, incredible tool to understand, you know, your social footprint and be able to work with these influencers. I think this is fantastic. Obviously, OmniSend, thanks, Greg. Uh, SMS and email is still a necessary channel. Uh, Skubana, for sure. Thank you so much, uh, Chad, for for sharing uh, everything you do with your platform. You really are the back office to really help scaling brands to understand their inventory and, and routing um, and purchase orders and all that. It's really interesting. Uh, if you're at a mid-market brand ready to scale up, Scubana's where for you. If you're not a DIYer, so if you're not doing your own marketing, then W Promote, I would highly recommend you have a look at what W Promote is doing. They have the ability to work with early stage brands also. They do also the largest brands in the world, but they're there for you uh, to help you with even one part of your marketing strategy. So certainly worth a, uh, a guess to kind of go and talk to them and see what they can do to help you. And then finally, obviously, just do you know, I just want to thank you again for getting all of these panelists together. Uh, thank you for uh, just getting it all organized. I think one takeaway, uh, the note that I put here is that I believe that for those listening today, if you feel that you're kind of, uh, uh, resources or your human capital a little bit scarce. Um, there is some scalable ways of using some technology and or outsourcing to some agency partner to kind of help you with your marketing strategy. Um, and so I hopefully that's what you hear some takeaways for today from this webinar is that there's some great platforms and there's some great partners that are able to help you and just Uno being one of them along with these five others. So once again, thanks everybody for uh, joining and we we'll look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Cool. Uh, thanks, Steve. Thank you, everyone. That was great. Thanks, everyone.